Thanks, Eva. Nice to see you all. Um, uh, I see some familiar faces, some of them are new. I'm Yarek. I've, uh, yes, um, I'm a maths person by education, but I moved to finance. I spent uh, most of my life working for financial institutions in Warsaw and London. Uh, I'm a great fan of, a fan of this space. I've been to most of the events uh, by uh, Venture Cafe. Uh, I'm actually seeing the, the new space for, uh, in the new tower tomorrow. Uh, what we're talking today is uh, uh, is is my take on the on the presentation. So uh, I'm guessing we, we're talking to uh, to some accelerators and some startups uh, that are willing to um, kind of get into the their teams into the next stage by talking to the first angel investors or the second rounds of institutional investors. And um, I decided to to name it uh, not what you should do, but what you shouldn't do. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's kind of unique. What we want to talk about today is the presentation itself. I assume that everyone's got experience. That's why the incubators and accelerators are out there to help you uh, create this first business document. Uh, and I'm quite sure that most of you had some experience with the, uh, with the business model as well. What I want to talk about is uh, the actual, mm, I call it the financial narrative, which is uh, uh, a link between the, the story that you present and what the investor translates into numbers, and this is uh, uh, this is my this is my favorite topic. Well, it's coming from my background, the mix of financial and maths. Um, everyone knows what is the typical flow of a presentation. Um, you define the problem, the market, as a solution, as uh, your uniqueness. It could be the team. Uh, you describe the competition, and then you go into the business model, the the financial aspects. What is the the things that we see? Well, in my last few years working with uh, with uh, startups, uh, usually the pro the problem is over explained. Uh, if you can't fit the description into a couple of sentences, it's either the problem is wrong wrongly defined or you you should simplify uh, uh also the, the the common mistake is recognizing no competition if there's no competition there might be no market um the problem that most of the teams have is uh, that the team is too similar to uh it comes from the same background and uh that's uh that's something that most of the accelerators actually work on, making sure that they we choose and build diverse diverse teams. And uh, of course, when you're talking to tech, tech companies, uh, there's uh, some of the financial bits are missing. So uh, when you get to the business model and the valuation, there's a lot that could be changed. Um, there's a great comp compilation of uh, uh, or it's coming from Crunchbase, which is a great resource uh, if you want to research your peer group and the transactions uh, that happened uh, on the funding uh, side. The uh, uh, the first one is is about how long it takes. Uh, if a simple transaction takes a few months, up to I don't know half a year to conclude, it's uh, getting to know each other before the transaction could take years. So start early. Uh, second, one, second one is even more obvious in Poland than anywhere else. Uh, the uh, amount of uh, private investors, angel investors, or VCs in the early stage is, uh, is tiny. There is uh, some bridging that through some of the agencies using EU or foreign, foreign funds co-investing co here it's still not ideal passion is that something that we're, everyone has and we all share it uh, uh no need to remind about that following up 
this is an interesting one. Uh, while I think that uh, it should be the founder and uh, the best person put forward to pitch, uh, to follow up, I recommend you take a external advisor, maybe a COO, someone who's going to keep the community of these uh, uh, funds and investors you, you, you already talked to in touch with you. It could be a quarterly newsletter or some other some other solution. Uh, fifth, and I can't uh, stress that enough, pre-qualified investor. Before you get to, there's a lot of people walking into the shop with no intention of buying. Their time waste. So their time waste is on both sides of the uh, of the stage, both on the uh, uh, on the fundraising and both uh, on the on the funding side. Uh, you should prepare to the meeting and but what i'm talking is uh making sure that the investor is fit to invest so he actually has a new open fund that he is investing in companies in your sector and with that ticket size uh, that is kind of rel um, uh, correlated with the stage of the of your uh, startup and the stage of the fund we'll come back to this later Focus, focus, focus. It's uh, whatever you sell to the investors, you also sell to your customers and you sell it to your employee. It has to be very consistent. And the story does evolve. So it's not a it's not one for all. It does change with time. And number nine is important for people that have some traction. Now you should concentrate, choose and then concentrate on a certain metric. If you don't you don't if you don't have that. Obviously, you're going to take a, some cut in evaluation. You're selling. You're looking for someone that will believe in your big vision. And the last one is is practice. And what I what I use for that is you can practice on uh, on uh, on investors that you care less for. So you have a list A and list B. And when you, when you have a new idea, just go to the ones that are not that crucial for you. This is what I was talking about, pre-qualifying your investor before you get to the table. Um, uh, I've been in that market for quite so long and I'm, uh, I don't believe that uh, there are just people walking around with money. Uh, there's been a lot of fads over the last few years, um, either connected to the cryptocurrency markets or some of the ways of distributing the EU funds. Uh, what I think we should focus on are something that you call a smart investor, not someone only with money, but also with time, experience, and connections to take you to the next level. The best way to qualify a, uh, a um, institutional investor, there's actually a great resource at the regulator website. There's a small link in the on the bottom of that slide. Uh, you can you can double check. There's a hundred, maybe almost two hundred funds listed in Poland uh, that are able to uh, invest in early stage. This is, uh, this is a funny one. This is a quote um, uh, about a company that has recently, uh, that actually has two institutional investors. And one of them is saying that they have not seen the pitch deck until after they signed the term sheet. Uh, I think it's a bit silly on that. So I did some more research and they, they're actually looking for a, a team of the investor. They're looking for a CFO. They grew up to 60 people. They're opening an office in Warsaw and they don't have a dedicated financial person. So um, I'm a, bit, a little bit worried about after, learn, after learning that. But anyway, it's a great quote. Uh, uh, you could sometimes sell on a, on a vision, but this is not what we're going to talk about today. Um, what we... What we love to do is follow the trends. And uh, this is something that uh, recently been mostly what? Uh, you could say um, everyone wants to be part of a sharing economy, uh, wants to create a new social media app, mobile app. So, um, it's uh, everyone's chasing social economy apps. Uh, I've tried to combine all these words. Uh, 
I recently met one startup in Poland who managed to do something like that. Uh, it's Planet Heroes. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, it's a crowdfunding platform for eco activists, which is uh, going global. Uh, what they do, they uh, they gather people around an idea. So it actually connects all of the all the dots. Uh, so you can still find uh, some space for yourself there. How? What are what are the big ones doing with uh, with the mission? I mean, if this is a, a this is more abstract level. We're looking at big companies uh, that are well funded, and uh, what they're saying that we're trying to make the world world better. Uh, there's no metrics, no finance here. But if you look at local companies, uh, this is one of my favorites. It's not a startup anymore. It's been created twenty or so years ago. Uh, but if you read into that, the mission statement, um, I think in the second and the third paragraph, they actually define uh, that the segment of a customer market and their global reach. And this is enough to kind of have for the investor to imagine what kind of uh, valuation he will put to that, to that story. I was looking for other uh, successful Polish startups that have mission statements connected to to, to finance. Booksy is an interesting one because it's in the current pandemia times. Uh, they actually pivoted from health and beauty into lending. So they now arrange meetings with uh, financial advisors from banks and non-banking institutions. Symmetrical has a more CSR approach to it. Uh, they're actually talking about uh, uh, empowerment. Uh, I like that one. This is uh, this is the uh, this is the most important part of my presentation. It's actually based on a on a uh, uh, on a lecture available on YouTube by one of my favorite professors, uh, uh, Professor De Moderan is, uh, I think, a teacher at Stern School of Business, New York, and he's uh, he's very well known for his valuations of the new companies, especially in the sharing economy space. Uh, his, uh, the, third, the three questions that he uh, asks his students when they try to value a company is about how likely is that story? And what, what, is, what, is, what, 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 what is he talking about? Well, whenever he sees an investment story, he is uh, trying to establish uh, a link between uh what you're hearing and the actual numbers behind that and the probability of executing these numbers uh when you uh, when you try to assess these things uh you can test uh all the assumptions in your presentation by what is more or less likely to happen and that means well, whenever you talk about a, uh, a market, let's, let's say your, uh, your, your business idea is into the uh, B2B to C market, it's a SaaS solution, and it's targeting medium companies in Poland. So the investor is, is thinking at the same time, OK, this is uh, 15,000 companies. They're hiring more than 50 employees. Uh, doesn't sound very sexy. Uh, so the next question is, how much are you going, are you going to charge for this service? Are you going to distribute it your, uh, by, uh, by, uh, on your own? Is it direct sales? How many clients can you reach within a year? Out of the 15,000, is it going to be 1,500 or more 150? If you're going to do that yourself with your team, it's uh, 150. So that comes down to whatever X amount you take for, per employee for your service. This is, uh, is translated to X, X time of 10,000 lotties in one year. Are you able to support your team uh, um, with this? Mm, maybe not. Maybe you should look for partners to distribute your product. Uh, does it require hardware? Is there some extra investment? This is the, the kind of narration that you should lead, that leads the investor in. How, uh, how likely is it for you to reach uh, a certain percentage of the market that you define? What uh, Professor de Modran is uh, stating, uh, uh, how did he define the 
uh, impossible and plausible in the uh, they, uh, the impossible is where you think you're going to grow forever faster than the economy. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Your uh, profit growth is going to be faster than your revenue growth. The implausible is when you don't reinvest or you think there's no competition or there's no other risks. So what you're trying to get is the improbable, but within a certain range of risks, uh, reinvestment and growth. So actually in the middle of that uh, triangle. This is a, a, an example of the impossible. I'm, uh, I'm really sorry for the uh, for the guy pitching this. I saw that at the recent uh, demo day. Oh, I got this here. Um, it's uh, I, I pixelated the name of a firm, uh, but I don't know if you, if you see what the what is the problem with that particular three slides. Uh, but I, mm, uh, he was. Well, the, the most obvious one is saying he's going to be the first in the CE markets. Uh, and uh, this is, and there's a big number here with some kind of percentage. Uh, uh, there would be no problem with that. But when you asked him uh, another question, he's, he's into peer-to-peer -peer car rental. And it appears that the market that was looking at have a different system of uh, insurance than Poland does. And he actually admitted that he started talking to insurers and they don't see that product yet. So he said it's illegal at the moment. So he kind of admitted that this pitch didn't make sense. Uh, talking about implausible, this is another example. Um, you could define your total obtainable market. You can define your service serviceable market. And this is a, this is a story that if you are a five person team, in a space which is mobile games with some of the companies that are running into hundreds of millions of budget and hundreds of uh, hundreds of people hired are you are you sure you're going to be able to get into that space this is uh, something that the investor would kind of uh, mm, mm, would could frown at that there's some good examples. Um, uh, this is just a, uh, you don't have to look at the slides, in, uh, uh, but I'm just trying to show that you show your market, you show a metric uh, that is uh, some kind of result. You're followed by the business model. So how do you get to build that particular market and the timeline behind that? And it all kind of goes down, narrows down to the financials. So not only you're trying to show the big the, the big picture, but also how much of the market and how much will you profit from the particular segments. So the question to everyone is, what is your key metric? Is it uh, is it your end user? Is it the number of actions that the user takes? Is it a uh, uh, the the churn of uh, the, is it uh, some other revenue metric? And uh, whenever you choose one. Uh, this is the the message you should come kind of communicate with both investors and your employees. This is the key one. So to sum up, what should you avoid? Um, uh, well, if there's no logic between the slides, um, it should flow. Uh, if you overstate, uh, if you use too many graphics or or humor. Uh, videos. That's an interesting one. Uh, I'm working with a lot of industry 4.0 st uh, startups, and there's very difficult for them when there's a mixture of hardware and software to present it for using still pictures. So they actually use short videos just to show what the solution does. And the last one I already mentioned: uh, when you, if you define the uh, uh, your your problem uh, over two pages, that's already too long. What I want you to take away from this uh, from this meeting today is um, uh, whenever you pitch, you have to know your numbers and not the current numbers, also the forecasts. And uh, you have to make sure that you actually are able to deliver. So you'll have a team or you have a plans to develop your team to get you there. When you talk about compensation, when you get to the business model, uh, you, you show what you pay to, to yourself, to your people. If it's if it's too high, it seems like you're making a good life out of uh, whatever project you started. If it's too low, it means you create some kind of debt and there's a risk of people leaving. So both are bad. Um, you have to make sure that there's uh, some kind of diversity on the team. Uh, and I don't mean it in the uh, obvious business or education 
uh, but, it's, but also uh, uh, the more kind of global diverse diversification by I don't know mix of uh, gender and race. Uh, this is what what the investors look at. Uh, we do that in our accelerator. Um, when you talk about strategy, there is uh, that's the exit strategy. So what's uh, what what makes you the exit strategy and the next well before that uh, the next stage of funding strategy? How are you going to make sure uh, that the company, your employees, and the investors are gonna uh, gonna be happy and are gonna move forward when you when you when you approach uh, in the next year or two the next funding stage? How are you gonna make sure that everyone makes money? And the last uh, and the, what's important here, uh, and I can't stress that enough. Uh, it, I'm coming from the uh, public uh, regulated markets. You can't guarantee returns. Uh, this is something that is uh, punishable here with millions of fines and years of prison. So please don't go into returns. Uh, valuation, when you when your business model ties into a nice valuation, it's always nice to uh, give a peer uh, valuation. So look at similar transactions at similar startups in the region. Uh, that is a homework that is appreciated by both uh, uh, the investor and it actually helps you to kind of uh, uh, know, show, that, show your work. I've got some Extra thoughts on the current situation. Um, and the takeaway from this is during the financial crisis of 2008, we've, uh, we've actually had a, a number of impressive number of, uh, of companies started. In fact, they're, they're not only fundraised and started during the crisis, they managed to survive. I'm not talking about the giants, but look at the Polish Nana Lekas, that's the planner. Vinted is a Lithuanian uh, uh, used uh, second-hand clove. Uh, it's almost a unicorn from what I'm learning. And Brainy obviously appear to be learning platform. So that's about it from me today. Uh, I think I, I got here in, just in time. I also talk about, uh, I work with startups and accelerators. I talk about financing, internationalization. I, I, like, I love playing with valuations. And I, I'm also a kind of expert on, uh, on LinkedIn. This is more about me. I spent uh, uh, the last few years with working with accelerators. Industrial Lab is a partner of this event. Uh, uh, please visit us at uh, the first table. Uh, also, I had a pleasure to work with the recent batch of, uh, uh, with, of Huge Bank partnership with Google for startups. I spent some time in the financial institution raising money for them. I studied a lot, and I'm a big fan of sports. This is an example of some of the startups I worked with. And uh, the left hand side. There's some of the local ones uh, in the middle row. You get uh, international ones. There's uh, people from Russia, Belgium, uh, Germany. And the right one is my favorite. There's not too many of them, fintechs. Thank you.